All right, but I will show stuff too. Uh, but let's do quick introductions. I'm Paul Allison, and Dan Dorenberg started Now Comment in 2008, and I took it over in 2018 um, with a lot of help from Dan all the time still. Got to say that. Um, Bunny uh, Bentham is uh, my newest friend, <laughs> teaches in Philadelphia, um, is going to be uh, reading Long Division with her students on uh, Now Comment soon and has been messing with AI uh, with her seniors. Uh, it's, it's an amazing story. It's happening right in front of us right now. Um, Chris Sloan has been messing with his seniors with AI a little bit, has been doing Now Comment work where they do a research project and they the articles they find, they put on Now Comment and uh, kind of make public annotation then. He sees them, other students see it. So that's all happening. Marina Lombardo has been working with me here and there in different places, um, is very familiar with Now Comment too. Waverly and Tamara, do you want to introduce yourselves and Christina? A little bit. Go for it, Waverly, yeah. Sure, I can start. Um, hi, I'm Waverly. It's nice to meet all of you. I am a um, second year PhD student at UC Irvine in California. I work with Mark Warshaw. I work with Tamara in the Digital Learning Lab. Um, we've recently been getting into a lot of projects related to ChatGPT. We're really excited to think about that and also other AI tools. Um, I'm especially focused on like thinking about writing and how we can use these tools in writing, but um, I'm interested in just kind of learning about everything uh, and kind of hearing um, about everything that all of you have been working on. So it's nice to meet all of you. Cool. And I'm Tamara Tate. I'm the assistant director of the Digital Learning Lab, a research scientist at UC Irvine. And we got introduced to Paul through a webinar that we did through the Wright Center in January and uh, have been big fans ever since. Cool. Christina. Cool beans. Uh, I work for the National Writing Project. Hi, I'm Christina. And um, yeah, I just follow Paul and Bonnie and Chris and Marina around, basically. <laughs> cool, cool. Marina, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, Hi, you I'm Marina. <laughs> and I just got into Now Comment. So <laughs> good, good. The staging site, right? It says mm -hmm. staging first. Good, good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm a third grade teacher in Westchester County, New York, um, and I've been coming, popping in here and there when I get my second wind, as I said last week, and Paul reminded me, I can stay up till like nine o'clock. Um, so. Cool. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Um, please, please interrupt me and say, I have no idea what you're talking about, Paul. What are you doing? But I want you to be able to follow and uh, kind of. So I am sharing my screen right now, and I'm, I want to make this so. And then I have to do a couple of other things so I can get to it. You can make that bigger if you don't know the um, Kuma space. There's a enter full screen button in the top right corner. Um, and this is the collection that we will be working on. Uh, I'll be introducing to you. And um, I want to propose that if you ever want to come back or other times when we can come back together, um, this is a place where we could use these documents to test out the thinking partners. And I'll explain what a thinking partner is. But there are 10 documents here. There are three poems. If you scroll down, there are three poems at the top. Then there are four articles of various lengths and kinds. Then there's an excerpt from um, Tommy Orange's novel and an excerpt from Casey Lehman's novel, and then a short story by Tommy Orange. So part, and I'm reading to you what I wrote up, or I'm not going to read it to you, I'm going to say it. Um, what we, I need to stop and say what a thinking partner is, right? Yes. So here's what we thought. We thought, uh, how do I do this? Uh, somebody else? Uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, let's just use the schools out. All right. Some of you are, such as Dan, are deeply familiar with Now Comment, and others are too, but others are not so much. So let me slow down and show this little piece. Here's what normally happens on Now Comment. Everyone can see Schools Out by Amanda Gorman? Yep. Yes, yes, yep. Okay. 
So a student comes in um, once a, a document gets created with a poem or an essay, or they, you can use multimedia too, but, um, and can do two things. Can click on a line or a, or a sentence, and then this box comes up and you can start a conversation. And there are two boxes. There's a summary of comment box, and there's a which has a limit of 255 characters, and then there's a full comment box down below. You can add images and embed video in these boxes, but these this is how anybody, any user, can comment on a sentence, or in this case, a line in a poem, or you can click on over here, you can click on a paragraph or a stanza in this case, and then you can start a conversation on the whole paragraph. All right. And Paul, yes. now you didn't say, because I don't know if th this group has um, video, because you can do video too. And yes, yes. But we can't do that with AI, so we're going to bracket okay. that for now. Yep. Okay. Yes, you can you can upload video um, images and you can annotate all of that. Um, so uh, it's, it's sort of, it's I think a powerful tool for all for all of it. Um, what we're experimenting with is, and what we thought was, what if we could have a user send a message out to OpenAI and say, hey give me some information about this text, right? That's the easiest way we're going to say it. And OpenAI can then send that information back to now comment and it become part of, of the conversation. All right. Did that make some sense? Mm -hmm. Questions yep. there? Okay, cool, cool. And, and so we're going to show you some examples of that. Uh, I'll show you this one right now. Um, so I, here's what I did. Just um, I took the first, was it the first? It was the first pair, the first stanza here, and I clicked on it, the little number one. And then instead of using, and we're talking about what the icon should look like, um, I don't want it to look like a robot, which uh, are, um, which it, what, what which it was until today. But anyway, um, it's this double icon right now. Instead, of, if I click on the one to the right, I would start a normal conversation. If I click on the double icon, mm -hmm. what comes up is select your thinking partner. Mm. Right? Now, my thinking partner could be, um, could be the author, could be, um, could be a, another view, could be a keyword extractor. We're experimenting with what this is. Oh, Dan, I'm, I'll go back and do the simple thing you told me to do but in okay. a second. Okay. Um, so in this case, what I did was I selected the author. All right. And I can show you how we created the author. It's like creating a character and, and you can create one too. All right. And then we posed a question. The question I think I was I posed was, "Can you help me understand this stanza?" Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Paul, um, yes. I saw it said the say? Marxist, and mm -hmm. I couldn't. I don't see Marxist when I look at it. Oh, so some of these. So it depends on whether it's public or not. And I don't know if I made the Marxist unpublic. So there's a drop down. Mine has everything that I've made on it. Oh, yours, I see. Okay. Yours may, and 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 it all has, has anything that we've made public. And oh, I, th I don't think question, the, yeah. I don't think the drop down is showing on your um, oh presentation. Good. I don't know what to do about that. But yeah, just just a little FYI. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I just want to read to you what the author said about the. Well, can somebody read? I, I don't want to read on it. Can somebody read the poem, the first stanza for me? The announcement. The announcement Thank swung you. blunt as an axe blow. All students were to leave campus as soon as possible. All right. Now, Chris, would you read what the author says? Can I call on you? <laughs> um, Is it big enough? What did you want us to feel with this first stanza? Right. 
I wanted readers to feel a sense of urgency to the announcement. I wanted to, the action to feel sudden and unexpected the way an ax blow is often unexpected. I wanted readers to have a sense of fear that comes with having to act quickly with the idea that it isn't a decision that can be taken lightly or delayed. The lines, the announcement swung blunt as an ax blow and all students were to leave campus as soon as possible serve as specific examples of this feeling of urgency both in terms of immediacy of an, the announcement and the importance of the order it contained. I wanna know what you're thinking about these lines. Do you think about a time in your life where you are faced with an urgent situation or know someone with something sudden? Uh, how does that connect to this passage? How does this relate to other stories you've either heard about firsthand or seen in books, movies, or TV, or in games? Please let me know in the comments section. So, uh, quick reactions. Would that be useful? I, I, it's this is an ongoing question, but what? How do you think this would uh, be experienced by a kid who's reading this text? Well, can I just say yeah, it seems like ahead. there's an answer, and then there's also like a suggestion or a question from the. Mm-hmm. The bot. Yep. Okay. And it also gets a student out of their own thinking, like like a baseline thought. Um, even just thinking about um Amanda Gorman and school, you know, and school. So it it it, it has a dual purpose. Mm -hmm. Um Anybody else? Even though, want? Yeah, even though it's a bot. <laughs> yeah. So um, before we move on, though, I mean, it, it no, kind of no. reminds me of what we might try to elicit as a response in a in a classroom if we were all studying this together. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering about the difference between, you know, like putting it at a discussion forum question. You know, that's I'm just tossing it out there. Yeah, sure. What's AI going to do that's going to be different in this sense? And and I have some suspicions, but yeah. What are those suspicions? Well, I think we can. It's going to react to what I say. And so maybe it becomes more individualized and personalized in that way. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Let me um, slow down and go back a little bit. Is that, or did anybody else want to say anything? Sorry. All right. When Dan and I talked about this earlier today, he said, you got to start really simple. And I did the opposite. I started with like the, the wildest for so far <laughs> possibility here. Let me show you how this is working a little bit. Okay. And let me do that by going back to the collection and going back to, let's choose. I don't know. Let's choose thinking inter interdependently, which is an article by Arthur Costa and Ben Akalik. And mm -hmm. the Jeremy who designed this used something really, really simple to, to make sure it works. And I think showing you that will show you how this is working. And then you can start thinking about what we want to do, right? So I'm going to click on this fifth paragraph right here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to click on the the partners. And this so that time, double icon is the partners, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. This time I'm going to choose capitalize. Mm -hmm. And the prompt that Jer Jeremy gave it was um, capitalize every word. That's the whole sentence. That's his whole description for this. So I'm just going to say, uh, do your thing. <laughs> um, quick technical note. Um, when we are sending information to through an API to OpenAI, we are sending both the question, the description of the partner, right? and the paragraph that we're using. So we're sending three pieces of text. It's analyzing those three pieces of text and sending back a message to us. Okay. Cool. 
So I'm going to, oh, I want to read this to you. Um, well, I'll hit continue first. Uh, we're, um, it, it, I, I may not finish this, but remember, everything the thinking partner says is made up. <laughs> Edit the AI results before you, you hit start conversation. Revise the message to make it helpful, honest, and harmless. All right, we'll go back to that. But one of the things I think is unique and interesting about what we're creating here is that when they get the text back from AI, it's, it's raw text for them to to mess with. All right. It's taking a while here. Um, Which some of my students did that in um, uh, Youth Voices. They they played in it and some did not. And I can tell you sort of can start tell, being having the capability of noticing who didn't collaborate with the bot and uh -huh. who... right so that got stuck so i'm starting again but yeah please keep talking <laughs> make this so uh, ask questions or thoughts yeah, yeah. but now i'm going one, back to capitalize one thing now just like you did this capitalize and do your thing is that, and you said jeremy put in capitalize every letter so i mean uh, yeah go ahead so is the bot already fed set parameters or okay yes and but we set the parameters right and that's what we need you to as a beta tester to start doing and it's what makes it hard if i can say it that way too but not hard but it's why we have to keep going back and forth yeah. let me explain what happened here and then i'll get to that question um I'm just going to enlarge this here. All right. So Jeremy said, capitalize every word. Mm -hmm. So that's what's it. That's how the how the partner is programmed, right? Um, and so if but then I said in my question, I said, capitalize every letter. Mm -hmm. So it's doing it's doing every word and every letter. It's doing both of those things. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I should have just said, "Do your thing." But what is what is it, what is the comment based on? So it's just taking. It's oh, just, it just taking, took the text. It's, it's just the the it's the taking the whole paragraph and it's capitalizing every letter. Got it. This Got is it. like a very simple example, right? Did so your point sense? is that we're giving we're, we've got three things: whatever we've selected at the okay. sentence or paragraph or document level. That's mm -hmm. going in, plus whatever Jeremy has created as what a Marxist is, what the author is, or what capitalize is, which is a batch of instructions. And then we layer on top of that the third thing, which is whatever specifics we do. So it's getting all three of those things to react to. You got it. Okay. Now, and, and to make the point of, of the raw text, so this comes back as text. I, I think we need to teach young people and you'll see kind of why I think with uh, it, that they can go here and edit this before they hit. Post. Um, yeah, it's I forget. that's why you before don't have to pop straight into a comment. That's right. Yeah. So so that's what good. goes into the comment is your 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 question that you asked that goes into the top box and then the bot fills in the bot. The, the partner fills in the bottom box. And then you edit that and you hit start conversation. And that pops up over here on the right side, right? Is this making sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I think now. That one was easy though, Paul. <laughs> I know. So I'm going, you can do this too. You can go to my library <laughs> but, and, and or you can watch me on the right side over here. There and, and this will end up for everybody yeah. when we make it live on the site. There are thinking partners. All right. Um, what gets listed there are the ones you've created and kept private and the public ones. All of this can change. So I, I'm just, just saying, okay. 
So I hit manage thinking partners and I'm coming to look at capitalize and I'm going here to edit and it's got a name and it's got a prompt and it has capitalized the words in the text. All right, that's the easy, simple one, as you said. All right, um, just to show you this interface a little bit, anybody can come here and duplicate anybody else's um, partner and then make changes to it. Um, administrators will be able to delete or destroy. I, I'm still working this through a little bit with Jeremy, but um, we want other people to be able to archive their things, not necessarily delete them. All right. So um, shall we do another one, a ne another easy one? Does that make sense? And, and while you're loading, quick question. Um, yeah. Can I bring in uh, an article that I've already annotated into this? Um, yes. Space? Yes, okay. you can. Yep. Okay. Oh, uh, your annotations wouldn't. Come like in. invite it? Uh, you would have to, it would just be uploading a new document. Okay. Yeah. So let's go, let's look at summarize because I have, uh, so I'm trying to build back toward the author one. Okay. Fair enough. So this one, Jeremy called summarize and he just told the, told it to summarize this text. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going back to my library. You can try this too while I'm doing it. Um, I'm going to choose a paragraph. I'm going to say, ask it to summarize and see what it does. Now, that see what it does, if you've been messing with AI, you know this already, but every time you ask it to do something, it's going to do something a little different, right? It's not going to come back the same. <laughs> well, it depends on what your temperature setting is. Right. Now, well, yeah. Even at very low temperatures, I think it, yeah, yeah yes, you're right. Tem, tem, and, and that brings up an interesting question. So far, we have not exposed all that to people. And that's, yeah. you can help me understand whether we should or not. Um, we want it to be simple to use. Uh, it would take a little more technical work on Jeremy's part, but he's willing to do it. If we want to expose all, all of the temperature and all the all the other stuff that you can control. In this case, he's controlled it. Uh, and I don't even know what he's done. Um, so I'm going back to thinking interdependently again. And I'm going to choose that same, is it the same paragraph? Yeah, okay, paragraph five. And I'm going to go to the assistants. Hmm. And this time I'm going to choose, sorry, the Marxist. You don't see the pop up, right? Okay. We do so, see the pop up. Yeah, we oh, you can do. See. Oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm not. So we see the pop up. We don't see the drop down that appears okay. when you click on the drop down. Yeah. yeah. So there's a drop down that shows that shows oh. all of these different all of these different things. And I'm choosing. That we saw the list previously. Uh -huh. I'm choosing summarize. Okay. And I'm just going to say, please help me understand this paragraph. And summarize is going to go out. And that was quick this time. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to hopefully you can see it, right? So uh, this is the paragraph. <laughs> and it says, this paragraph discusses how humans are naturally. So it does a summary, a relatively good summary. Fair enough? But you might want to add in this in your text, like at a second grade level or something. Uh, yes, you could do that. You could say uh, you could say, "Hey, I'm a I'm a I'm in eighth grade. Can you help me understand this?" And it it, it will do that for us. Good point, Tim. Did that did that make sense to everybody? So when I ask my question, I can change up a little bit of what I get back. Um. Because I was sort of thinking when I saw your what you had as a baseline for summarize, mm -hmm. I was possibly thinking that there was going to be an age band there already embedded. So yes, there isn't though. Um, right. Let me show. So and, and I'm trying to go this like like one. Sorry. Block, no, no, you're. I no. Please don't. 
you. That was a great comment. Um, I what I did because I'm crazy is I added mystery. <laughs> okay, so I said, be a careful, thoughtful expert reader and give me a summary of the text. Add a mystery that this text leaves open. And then encourage me to reply back to you about all this. Explain that you are going to answer my question about this text by paraphrasing it. It was like blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it actually goes on for some time here. Right, which is part of why we saw in your very first complicated one in asking us questions back to engage us back into the text. I assume you had something like this in there. Right. Now, this is the trick. The trick is I probably don't need all that in there, right? But I don't know that until I put it in. Right. Take a sentence out, put right. another one in, reaffirm, you know. So that's what learning how to engineer these these prompts is about. Yeah. But it's also about once I get it to work really well, and once we as beta testers can make it work well, we can then make that public for other people to use. Mm -hmm. right? So that's the idea here. But all right. Thank you for so, letting me explain so far. But can, so don't ask you want your, my ask students your question. playing with this in long division because even I, you know, I went straight to long division. And okay. I asked it um, the first page, second paragraph. <laughs> my name is City. So I chose another view. Um, mm. And where did the character get this name? Was my question. I asked it a simple question. Yeah, but it came back with a highly in-depth response. <laughs> Does it make any sense? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can say it doesn't. So here's, but it it gets you thinking. It it makes you think, and then um, as uh, I forget her name, Tamara says. Uh, it, it finishes with a question. So it talks, first of all, explain, it explains what another view means about mm -hmm. a counter argument and why we have counter arguments. Then it talks about the, the character's name, could, what it could symbolize. And then it comes up with evidence to why it could symbolize that. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you reliable sources <laughs> to find support for its answers. And then it says, it's your turn. <laughs> now reread the text with this counter argument in mind and let me know what you're thinking about the text in your reply. And that was one of the shortest sentences in the text. And it, mm -hmm. I mean, it came up with a lot. Now, so, sorry. No, well, I was say, thinking, I'm like, no, I really appreciate you doing it. And, and that's exactly what we need to do. But one of the things, one of the things, and I don't want to hear more of what you think of it. One of the things, one of the reasons in this collection, there is poetry, um, essays, and, and fiction is that these things do different, these partners do different things depending on the kind of text it is, right? right. So the different point of view I designed mainly for nonfiction text, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. anybody could use it the way you just did. Yes. And, but it may not give you something and going back to the three words, it may not give you something that's helpful, honest, and, and, uh, harmless. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. With that in mind, then could these characters be, um, grouped for users in in a way that they know which characters to use for which type which yeah. genres in the meantime we could just yes probably but we could just or color coded or, yeah somehow yes we could that's a good idea thank you um let me just sorry anybody else want to jump in because i <laughs> okay so I, I just want to get this is this is actually an absolutely fascinating article, by the way, by uh, Wolfram. Um, but um, that aside, I, I've been messing with just his first paragraph, right? And so if you want to look at that example, 
I did ask it. Um, I did say, what did you want us to understand right away, right from the get go of this article, right? And he gives he quote unquote. We get an answer as if it is the author. Now, just to say, I designed it to say, to ask it to to quote from the text to support the things you're you're explaining, right? So it does that. And I did design to say, I, I'm design. We can decide not to do this, or or right. But I've been designing them to say. Um, now I'm curious to hear what you think about the article. How has this improved? How has this improved your understanding? What do you think? Let me know in the comments, right? So it it's trying to open dialogue at the end um, using um, Deborah Appleman's uh, literary lenses. The Marxist here says, what does this paragraph make you think about chat GPT? And it gives a, uh, you know, you can think what you think of it, but <laughs> it gives that analysis. The summarizer, this is all in the same paragraph. You wouldn't, do, a, a student wouldn't do this. This is just us testing, all right? Um, I want to point out, there's a, a one called a keyword extractor. This one, and th this one actually works in the uh, fiction stuff too, but it does begin with why do we do this? And then it gives the key, it grabs three to five, I told it, uh, keywords, and it defines each of the keywords. And then it says, now let me know what you're thinking about this text using the keywords in your reply. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so I did that too. I did so, the summarize and pull out the keywords in the summary. Cool. I hope everyone else is doing what you're doing. <laughs> Go play, see if it makes sense. Pick one article and, and see what you can do with it. Um, the other I just summarized it right on point because you know I've read this book before. Mm -hmm. So the summary was good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the if paragraph it, that is summarized. If it wasn't good. Right. If it didn't make sense, or or if it didn't wasn't helpful, or it gave information that wasn't real, which it can do, right, and probably will do. You have a couple of choices. One is you can just edit it before you post it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or two, you can you can ask for it again and see what right. you come up with the next time, right? So I'm thinking about students though getting them to regenerate their responses, which that's. I usually looks regenerate your response. Yeah. But well, I didn't see how to do that here. You you just you, comment you go, options. You go back to the you go back to the icon, hit it, and it comes up again and you just redo it. Yeah. There's no yeah, there's no way to regenerate. Okay. With him. Um the the uh, the another view, um Chris Sloan and I kind of tortured ourselves with this one and I just copied it from Youth Voices um, there. So this one, it, it and, and what we learned is that if you just say, give me evidence, it'll say, it'll make up stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But what we learned to say instead was give me types of evidence, what kinds of counter arguments, like what kinds of evidence do people <laughs> use for that counter argument? And then where do I find reliable sources? Don't give me the sources, but tell me where I can find them. Which, which I was thinking is more helpful for my students who are seniors. The one well, I teach freshmen and seniors, but uh, mm -hmm. in high school, um, because if they get the source, oftentimes they go right to it and start reading it, um, mm -hmm. and get you know don't see the forest through the trees kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that is pretty helpful to consider the types of counter argument sources. Mm -hmm. And I've only tested it three or four times, but I think a reader, <laughs> I mean, I think it would be a valuable thing sometimes for a reader to say, you know what? I don't know if I agree with that. Let me see what the counter arguments are. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can I, yeah. can I, 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 Please jump in. Jump I, in and it. I want to, I want to stop presenting and hear, hear what people are saying. Um, what, what, one idea I had with several of you, I think Bonnie and maybe also you, Paul, mentioned about like 
encouraging students, you know, to make sure that they're like editing and not just not just keeping the AI as is. And just one idea that occurs to me is that now comment has you 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 can make suggestions about revising a document so it has kind of like a track changes feature and yeah. we could have jeremy maybe implement that track changes in the ai's response so that when the student submits the comment you could see what the ai gave and then like a red line and then the student could be you know making it his or her own and now maybe that's not visible to the other students and just the teacher sees it. But we actually, I think, have the technology where the teacher could kind of audit and see what the student's thought process is. Yeah. So that's that's one possible idea. Good. Keep ideas. With that. Uh, well, yeah. we were right. actually, you know, we're developing our own tool, too, at the Digital Learning Lab. And that is one of Mark's dream dreams for the tool is that the the bot as we're calling it would send back sort of a marked up version of whatever like if you'd asked it to to shorten it or whatever whatever the suggestions were to your essay for example um and then you could it would show the track changes which you would then go in and accept or reject to maintain the agency of that yeah um, that's not not the kind of thinking partner thing you're doing. Well, but. I'm thinking, and I'm thinking that we could at least not allow it to be posted until it's edited. But right? the, yeah, my my guess is the students yeah. would like you know add a space at the end. And, yeah, uh, I know. I know. Yeah. So but, it, yeah. it adds kind of a reflective piece to like you know there's your portfolio for this piece of writing now reflect on the changes you made it kind of adds a little meta cognitive layer to it that could be useful you know for That's teacher cool. and student yeah. um the the other question i had is for for what these ais are that we're someone said something well i, I don't know what, what made me think of it but i'm just wondering for the teachers you know, the frontline teachers of you, which I am definitely not. Um, what do you guys just, if you're, if you're taking like a student centric view of these tool possibilities, mm -hmm. I'm just curious what people think the students would be most interested in, like what kind of AI perspective would be like exciting to the teachers, uh, to the students, <laughs> to the students, because some of these that we're, and that you know are the examples that are in the system now i think are, are you know kind of from a teacher or adult mm -hmm. fairly high level intellectual perspective and well i mean um i'll say my piece and then stop <laughs> um i think my students valued summarizer uh, but first you know i had them summarize and then ai summarize and then compare the two and then also the counter argument because I require them to look for counter arguments. So I think the utilitarian aspect of it for for that particular task is what they were interested in, which was like problem solution writing. And also for, for my students, sometimes they have problems, even though we're inquiry school and questions come first, for the students, sometimes they have uh, problems developing good questions. And if, in fact, uh, it could generate questions based upon their thought or um, some type of overarching idea or theory um, to help them be become better uh, questioners and researchers. Ultimately. So, so, Bonnie, what, what, what do you think you would, how would you program the thinking partner to do that do you think what would you tell it to do uh, so you, you talked about the literary lenses because mm -hmm. you know critical analysis for a senior it always boils down to a literary lens i need to have them and i don't tell them which one to choose i try to get them to choose for themselves because they each they have to justify it mm -hmm. so if in fact they choose a literary lens 
um, and then ask the bot um, to uh, come up with five to 10 questions for them. They have to be able to answer those questions wow. themselves through that lens. Um, so, so the lens, instead of the lens giving this, you know, five paragraph analysis, the lens would ask some good questions mm -hmm. about the text. And then they could uh, respond back, um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then that would really start a back and forth with a bot. I, that's what I'm thinking. But, you know, students usually blow up your thoughts after you think. No, no, that's, that's good. I, and kind of to piggyback off Bonnie's, I think you'll find this too. What age do you work with, Bonnie? See, I have seniors. Okay. It's yeah, high school. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I um, find that their questions morph. You know, the more they do their research, the more it's, you know, like kids are always saying, like, oh, can I change my question? Or, mm -hmm. And so, like, if the bot would check in, you know, like, simple things like, is your question still the same? Or if it could sense that it what they're looking that. for is not their question. Right. Or if they can sense that... Uh, <coughs> You know, their questions are way off track or they were even off track based upon the theory that they chose for the text that they're reading. Lots of different levels of who can make these things. And I, so I just want to point that out. Like any, in theory, any user on the on now comment will be able to make their own, right? So, but that may be too hard to do. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's worth thinking of. But if a student had an idea like, I wish it did this, mm -hmm. they could go and do that. They could go and make that, right? Or how do they know that, though? Well, no, know. we'd have to show them and we'd have to build, you know, we'd, they'd have to learn how to do it. That's what I meant. It may be too hard. But if we give them some examples, we're designing it so that they could say, oh, I like what that did, but I wish it gave me a question at the end right, or whatever, mm -hmm. they can go in and duplicate the one that they just used and then just make some changes in it, right? It's a good extension activity, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how that will work out, but we want to design it, at least theoretically, that anybody can make them, right? Um, I have a quick question. So for the, uh, using the, the AI, is it only possible if you, um, are interacting directly with the text. Um, so like, it can, are you able to create your own comment, like, you know, an annotation or something, and then have the bot engage with both the comment that you put on a part of the text, as well as that part of the text um, that you were engaging with? Does that make sense? I didn't follow to the end. Sorry. So I'm wondering, <laughs> so I was thinking like a use case that we were describing mm -hmm. where, um, you know, a student wants to understand if their reading of an article is accurate or that their questions that they're generating from a certain part of the article is um, they're good questions. So are they able to first like make their own comments, just annotating the text itself and then ask the AI to then give essentially like give feedback ah. on that comment that they put as well as also so realizing what part of the text they're actually engaging with so instead of the paragraph being sent the it would be it would be, would be like sent. the comment it would be the previous comment to. and the paragraph right because the ai would need to know what the comment was also replying to like is it possible to have both of those things in there of course it is <laughs> I, but i don't know yet um, great suggestion. Yeah, I, I I think there is a limitation in how much how much yeah. can get, it, it can you know it can handle, um, mm -hmm. but, but we could test that out. Yeah, yeah because I, they would need to know the paragraph and the comment. And mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that it's too much. But as a kludge kind of a thing, like you you probably could make the text or your summary like you know given this text quote whatever mm -hmm. the actual document is, and then you just ask your question rather than do an annotation and then have two different things. Yeah. You just make it part of one one thing. And that you, you could achieve that effect, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's a good point. So you could like say you could like choose the paragraph and then you could yeah. say, I, I don't understand this or this sentence really stands out to me. And so you can Yeah, so the, the area for your specific question would be something like that. Like given this text 
colon, uh, you know, everything in there, uh, give feedback on these questions I generated and then you put the questions. So I, I think there's a way to do it within the tool. I'm just wondering like if the, I don't know, UI and everything would need a, if there's a, if there's certain adjustments that would be need, that would need to be made to allow for that. But yeah. No, that's a great suggestion. We'll keep it yeah. in mind. Thanks. Um, so the, uh, yeah, and just to kind of, just to say that the UI and all that is still in, in, in flux. However, I want to get it out there so that we can get more people with ideas, you know, so we can start building stuff together. But, but we're not ready for that yet, but just... So I guess, I guess I, let me make that a question then. At what point could we involve other teachers, other students? You know, we're, you're the first group besides myself and Dan a little bit, mainly myself and Jeremy. So it's been three of us, right? A little bit messing around here. We need you to mess around and keep giving us feedback and, and then release it to the larger world in some way. On, on the main site at some point. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I don't like the dog on different, uh, drop. I don't like all these drop downs. For me, it's nothing to do. I don't want to see a bot capitalized stuff. I don't, what oh, is that? I, no, no, that's, that was just an example. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Well, I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I, I absolutely. But, but what, I mean, because it's nothing to play with. I don't even want to see anything capitalize anything. Or, or can Bonnie, I ask it to Bonnie, capitalize? Buddy, I was just showing this, you how this it works. But I would ask it. Go ahead. Capitalize this. Capitalize it so it will look like a flower in the center of a paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I mean, because okay, capitalize. No, even the, the capitalize was that, just an example to show you how it works. It, it, we're, we're we're not going to keep that. But your question does bring up, like, maybe do we want users to be able to select the ones that they want, right? So there might be a list, and they could just check off, give me these three mm -hmm. and I, for this text. Um, so that's a possibility, right? Yeah. And then, Paul, we can uh, upload articles to this working group, right, of our You own. can, yes. Yeah, OK. Yep, yep. Cool. Other thoughts, questions, issues? Where do you think we should go next? I'm just curious, like, why you didn't want it to be a little robot? Because it's very, um, I, I feel like, you know, UX, UI, it's a little confusing that you, like, click that double thing and then, then. You the, 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 double thing's not, the double thing's not right yet. But I personally, I want it to express the, the collaboration and not that, the robot's doing this for me, right? I want to say, you're going to click on that, get some information that you can then build into a com in, into a dialogue. Kids are comfortable though collaborating with the robot. Okay. I mean, from, from our early work that we're doing with our our little ones that the Converse to Learn project is doing, kids do have a sense that they can that that a robot is something different. It's not human. But they have some really interesting. Huh. I'll, I'll put the robot back. <laughs> I, I think it's for now. I think, I mean, yeah. Christina, you work with third graders, you said, or little littler ones, right? No, that's Marina. Marina does, I, yeah. I just was curious because I, I just was like, well, oh, that made sense to me, so I just wasn't sure. So I want to get away from the idea of it being a bot, though. I no, okay, fine. So but you also I, don't want it to be a person of authority because you want them to question it. I guess yes, I agree. So oh, okay. we can keep can it a bot. Yep. What? Can you think about um, a lot of teenagers are reading dystopian novels, like you know, just an out of body type of uh, thing. Because you know, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, see, you know what? People of color got to be in on this conversation, or otherwise we get left out again. And and the children that we're serving, you know, I teach the world, so I don't really. I care about me and the legacy that I provide. So, you know, what is a bot going to look like? And, and why is that bot looking the way it looks? Mm -hmm. And is it the person? Is it really that person that looks like that that's telling me or suggesting 
for me or giving advice to me. So all of that I, I take into consideration. So it could be an avatar more humanistic, but then maybe green or purple or orange or something. Orange or something. Right. It could, it I mean, could also be. My, mm -hmm, the oh, it, it, it might be now comment hasn't done a lot of user customization, but it really could be like a emoji, like an Apple emojis where mm -hmm. the, the user is students or like whatever get to pick their own, uh, Skin. Age, skin color, you know, you could be some different stylized things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also thinking you, you well, the, the, the UI, I think right now, Jeremy has, is kind of using the same field labels for the AI, like the comment and yeah. summary. That's confusing. I thought. And I think, I, I think it needs the AI thing, I think just needs a different I don't needs, but I think it would benefit from a different. Oh, instead, of, instead of summary, it could, it, it could, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Like sort of like, you know, human prompt or, you know, my prompt. Your question. Like, and, and, and prompt the, isn't even the way kids would frame it, right? Your, the vocabulary they would use. So it's like my question mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the chat and bot response right? and, you know, and just, but anyway, you, you might have an icon with like a stylized kid, student, and a stylized robot to capture Paul's idea of a, like a collaborative, you know, there's two of us, it's not just an authority robot. There's a diff different ways to do it. I, I, think, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff that could be done there. How, however, I think students need to know that it is a machine, right. that this is not a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, this is not a person. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, all right. Welcome back here next week. Um, we are, well, uh, you don't have to, but you know, what can I tell you? Yeah, Every you're, Wednesday you're, you're now, you're now conscripted. <laughs> well, you're giving, you're giving extra credit to everyone who shows up, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bonnie, thank you so much for giving us the time and everyone else too. Wait, and, and Tamara. Um, we, we will, I, I, some of us will continue this. I know you come uh, here every Wednesday. You've been inviting me. I haven't been coming. I said, let me come. It's okay. It's so uh, you, you contributed a lot today. Um, you, you do have access to that staging site too. I, I know everyone's life is really busy and do you have time to, you know, help us, um, beta test? Probably not, but as much as if you do anything, we'll see it there. Good. Right. So, Okay. Okay. Um, and thank you. Can I brag about you for a minute, Paul, before we get off here? Can I just brag about you? No. I, yes, I'm going to anyway. <laughs> I have to let you all know, if you all don't know Paul Allison, and I really didn't know Paul Allison, we just sat together at a table one day and we just started chit-chatting and I said, oh, I need you in my life. <laughs> and anyway, <laughs> it has been happening and for the past week, he's been in my classes with me. We've been on Kumo Space with our, my students. Um, and, you know, Paul's brain is always going. Chicka, 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 chicka. And so when the students talk and they're doing things and they're bouncing around on um, youth voices, Paul is paying attention to how they're moving and what they're thinking is and what capabilities they need so then he shows off the next day and he has three or four different capabilities for the students to tap into so that they can just they don't have to go through a hula hoop they can just go down the street and get to what it is they need to get to and i mean that's that was just fabulous so i just have to brag on you no, and it's been a delight a working with your kids so yeah if yeah. you get a chance you have to go on uh, youth voices and click the icon SLA Bieber because yeah I, I can see there's a bunch my children rocked it out but that's because of Paul that's nah of Paul. nah it's all of us it's cool cool but Paul that going to your question about when do you let it go to the world versus how much more do you do right. I I think given Bonnie's point yes. you let it out sooner with small stuff 
and see how that goes. Yeah, we can always change the outcome, right? Uh, 100%. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so get out there because you're doing such a good job responding to what the students are actually, because none of us actually know what they want or need right. until they see the options and, mm -hmm. and they come up with what they want. Um, can, I, can I throw in a, a quick I idea too there? Um, I think I think part of it is to test with students like like I had the benefit of Paul giving me an hour long kind of one on one and and this group has had the benefit of the one on one but I think like as the as the interface gets refined enough that the students get it mm -hmm. like that that's kind of when it if if you release it mm -hmm. when it's confusing to the students right. I, I think that would be a, a danger. That's helpful. Yeah, thanks. But I, uh, so, uh, so, so we can have do whatever now. Children do whatever. They're not afraid, and and they just they they. I I found out that they want to play, and they want to play because they always have doggone cell phones connected to their doggone hands, <laughs> and they don't even know how to use them. They don't know how to use their cell phone as a walking computer because I'm saying to myself, well, come on, Paul. I'm saying to myself after we get off here, come on, Paul, let's let's put my children on it. That's 118 children from all over the world. Well, they're already on the other site. It's just how to open it I'm up. Talking about yeah, so Bonnie, uh, I'm going to have my students respond to yours. I, my students are on Youth Voices, too, so you'll be hearing from my kids. Cool, cool. Go. Bonnie, Bonnie was worried about how many people like giving time in the class for commenting. And then the next day, your kids are all, all over it. Anyway, they were all over it, <laughs> they were all which was cool. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll night. be back in touch. Awesome. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Cantrell.